Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on using the active mode in the processing programming language. So up until now we've been using the static mode and that's where we write our code and the, the program runs from top to bottom in order of the lines of code in the, in the line numbers. So now we're going to move to the active mode which allows us a lot more flexibility in terms of programming the behavior of our program and that's where we take our code and we break it up and put it into blocks called modules and those modules instead of being run from top to bottom each module is only run in response to specific uh, system events or when you specifically call them so they can be put into different orders and then uh, they can run in response to different things that happen so how does that look well let's have a look first at what these modules look like. So the first thing we need to do when we call a module is we type in, in most cases, the word void. So if we have a, a module that returns any information to wherever it got called from, the type of information would go there. So most of the time and for now we don't have to worry about that. The next thing is the name of the module. So the first module we put into our processing sketch is called setup. And that's one that's automatically run uh, when you first when you run your program and anything inside that module is run once when you um, first start your program. So we have setup, then we have a pair of normal brackets and that's where if you were passing any information into a module that's where the information would go. So we're not passing any information into this module so those brackets are empty. Next we have a pair of curly brackets and that's where the actual code lives. So normally we split those up over multiple lines and then the, mo the code itself would go in here. So we would put, for example, uh, size would go in here because we need, only need to set up our window once. So let's set up an 800 by 600 pixel window in setup. And there we go, we've got ourselves size. Let's just make it nice and white, shall we? So background. There we go, we've got a, a white canvas that we can now draw all our lovely colored stuff onto and that should work fine. Okay so what I want to do now is draw a program that rather than drawing something that stays there we want to draw a rectangle that goes from the top left corner and that's the top left corner of the rectangle and then the right bottom right corner of it will follow the mouse around so as I move the mouse around the rectangle should change its shape and size so that that corner follows the mouse around. So to do that we're going to need to declare ourselves some variables. Now variables if we want them to be available in all our modules we need to declare them outside of all the modules and that gives them what's called global scope so they're visible everywhere so let's have ourselves a variable for the width of the rectangle okay so we can see here that the the word width has been highlighted in orange and that means that the system has recognized it as a word so it already has a meaning which means we shouldn't use it again so let's find a different name for our variable let's call it rect width so rect width is the number of pixels wide that our rectangle is and let's have rect height for the height of our rectangle so now we need to have a, a place to put our dynamic code so at the moment we've only got setup which runs once that won't actually help us do anything new so we need to use another module and that module is called draw again it's a standard module that's built in and unlike setup which runs once, draw runs 60 times every second. You can change the rate but by default it's 60 times a second. So we have our draw loop and the first thing we want to do in our draw loop is maybe calculate our width and our height of our rectangles. So because we're starting from 0, 0, so let's just have a quick look at that again. We're starting from 0, 0 up here the width of our rectangle is the x location or how far across from the left hand side the mouse is and then the height of our rectangle is the distance from the top or the y value of the mouse so let's pass those through so we can say that the rect height equals mouse x now mouse x you can see there is highlighted in orange and that's because it's a, an internal system I suppose it, it's an automatically available variable that you can call at any time and that will give you the current location of the mouse or the current x location of the mouse and then we can say that the height of the rect oh, that was rect width wasn't it and then rect height is equal to mouse y and as with all of these they're case sensitive if you have a lowercase y it just won't recognize it okay so now we've got our uh, width and a height for our rectangle now we can draw the rectangle and we use that with our rect command so we want it to start at 0, 0 and we want it to be rect width 
wide and rect height tall. So now when we run our code, we should find ourselves with a rectangle. So as I move the mouse around the canvas, we can see that we get ourselves a rectangle, except that the rectangle doesn't go away again. So when we draw over the top of our old rectangles, it's fine, but when we're moving our rectangle smaller, we can still see that all the old rectangles are there. So we want to be able to get rid of those. So the standard way of doing that is to take our background and move that into the draw loop. So it's quite common to have the back, background command be the first line in the draw loop. So now, when we go through this loop 60 times every second, the first thing that happens is that you get a, a fresh background paint to clear this, the background, and then when you draw the rectangle, you're drawing it onto a plain white background. So now when we run it, we should find that even when we shrink away, we find that we get the um, get just the the current rectangle, and all the old ones have been effectively um, wiped out by the by the background command. So that's basically it for the dynamic mode. There are other modules you can get that are triggered by system events, so you can get one for the mouse going down, for example. So let's do that one. So again, we use void and we use mouse pressed. So mouse pressed is triggered when the mouse is pressed. So let's give ourselves, I don't know, let's say a red rectangle. So red fill when we press the mouse. So now we should have a, it should behave the same until I press the mouse and then it goes red. So I can drag that round and give myself a red rectangle. When I release the mouse, nothing happens because I haven't actually caused, written any lines of code that change the rectangle's color. So if I want to do that, I need to invoke another module called mouse released. And that, of course, is triggered when the mouse is released. And let's make the rectangle go blue when we release the mouse. So now we should have a rectangle that doesn't do anything until we press the mouse first time around. We press the mouse, it goes red. We release the mouse, it goes blue press the mouse, it goes red, release it, it goes blue, and it will just keep doing that until we close the program down. So there are other ones you can call, and I won't go through them in this mod in this uh, tutorial, but you can have ones for key press, you can have ones for moving the mouse, you can have ones that are specific to touch screens, you can have ones that are specific to other devices, so accelerometers and things like that if you're working in particularly Android on mobile devices. So you can look all of those up on the processing website, but it all works much the same as, as what we've shown here with these particular calls that we've used. So that's basically it for an introduction to the dynamic mode for the processing programming language. Thanks for watching.